ladies and gentlemen, get ready for combos. Well, let's see how long the opponent lets us do cool things. Triggers. What is happening? Commanders. <laughs> In my opinion, the most broken deck you're going to see. Monkey. This is Historic Brawl. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and it's a brawl day. And that should mean that there's a video on the official Magic the Gathering Arena YouTube channel that is standard for those of you who love that or just love double CGB. But on this channel today, we're playing a fan favorite from the new set. It's Ariette of the Charmed Apple. This is a one and a white and a black two four human warlock. When each creature that's enchanted by an aura you control can't attack you or planeswalkers you control at the beginning of your end step each opponent loses x life you gain x life or x is the number of auras you control it's an aura black white color identity commander and we can build it in a variety of ways to do a variety of things in some ways it's a little bit prisony as we enchant our opponent's stuff with planar disruptions and realm breakers grasps and repro and Heliod's punishments to make their creatures useless. And then at the same time, we drain them with Ariette. That's kind of cool. And then on the other side, it can be a little bit aggressive. We can put auras on our own creatures so that we go smash, smash, go fast as fast as we can. And in that vein, we have cards like Hateful Eidolon in the deck, along with Saram, along with Core Spirit Dancer, along with Light Paws, the Emperor's Voice. And we have enchantments that buff their power, like Ethereal Armor and All That Glitters. So we're doing a little bit of both. We add some evasion with Angelic Gift. On top of that, we have to close the game. The Aura's deck, when it draws perfect, might be able to make a giant voltron threat, but what if the opponent interacts with you? We need to sometimes get around their giant board and drain them out. Now, Ariette already does some draining on her own, but we can kind of pile onto it with curses. Curses are also auras and count for Ariette's drain. And we've got some sweet ones like Curse of Leeches in the deck. There's also cards like Vengeful Strangler that turn into curses, Trespassers, Curse, Cursebound Witch when it dies, drafts can often draft you a curse from the spellbook. Many of the cards in the spellbook are curses, although there's some other stuff too. There's even some of the big curses like Overwhelming Splendor, Cruel Reality. These are cards I don't usually find a way to get into a deck, but we're putting them in this deck today. Top it off with some just kind of take over the game and also close the game, drain them out effects and some value. We've got a number of those broken cards like Necropotence. We got Dark Tutelage. We got Black Market Connections, things that are offset by the life gain of Ariette to get us more value. Uh, one Ring, another good example. But then we get into Shieldred and Rankle and this Elish Norn, which whenever something dealt damage to us, they'd have to pay or lose to life. And then this Elish Norn, cards that just kind of help us close the game and take advantage of the opponent in the state where most of their cards don't work the way they want them to. It's a funner deck than you might even expect. It might seem like it's not a me deck. I find it very much a me deck. It's very evil. I did play this Commander on Worst Possible. Historic Brawl is much different from Commander and this is a build that I think can actually get you wins in the queue. So let's dive in. Thank the sponsors of the channel, CoolStuffInc.com and Moxfield. Let Ariette's nonsense begin. Command Fest Orlando is coming October 20th to 22nd. So get ready for a weekend full of Magic the Gathering in one of the country's premier vacation destinations. Get your tickets now at CommandFestOrlando.com. Draga, Draga, Mana Dorks. Mana Dorks. We got some ways to remove Mana Dorks. So this is a hand is a keeper. Gonna need more black mana though. We're not beseeching many mirrors or massacring with meat hooks. We don't get some black mana. No Mana Dork on turn one? Opponent, what, what's become of you? I guess keep the dream of Beseech alive with the Mana Confluence. Could rip two straight black sources. It's in my range. Ooh. I really want to play that. But I do need to shut down the curator. That card is really good. Oops, all green mana. Okay. Black off the top, but it's tapped. Right. 
They put counter on this. They tap it for green. We could just disrupt it. Or we could also get Ariat on the field. Apparently no auras to be excited about. That could change fast. We could also set up a Besiege for next turn. Don't even know what I'd do with it. I guess get the One Ring? It's pretty good. Okay. And they don't appear to have red, so let's do this. And hit the Swamp. Nice. If we had done this, if I had thought that through and done this first, we could have double spelled this turn. Could have had a planar disruption. Oops, all green. Two color mana bases are dangerous in this format. I think I should hook them. I can beseech later. Although if we wait a turn, we also get Jugen, but if this is a round, yeah. Okay, let's go shut down the Scrap Gorger so that they can't cast their commander. Cast Ariet. And then hopefully we can hook away their dorks and the Jugen. No! Not the red mana! All right, each creature of the mana ability, plus two, plus two. Oh, oh no. Oh no, don't do me like this. I mean, it might be a big meat hook. Nope, they make a five, seven out of the druid. Okay, it'd be that way sometimes. Now I guess we hook for two and curse them. They still have the mountain, unfortunately. <laughs> but Trespasser's Curse is a solid card, and we are draining. But we've got this 5 7 to figure out. Commander 7 9. No big deal. We go to 18. <laughs> Alright, whenever you cast a spell, if at least 7 mana was spent to cast it, untap target creature plus seven plus seven and trample too much must die all right uh we beseech a mirror for sure i think we can let the hook go and we gotta kill radodrovic how do i turn it into a nothing for the rest of the game we've got ossification they could recast it Reprobation turns it into a coward. I wasn't going to use the mana anyway. If I get a two drop here, that was really dumb. Is there, there's got to be something more expensive we could do that's good. And really not really. Although Overwhelming Splendor is amazing. I would need two lands to cast it. I need to make it lose all the abilities. I guess I have to go with the cheaper one. I built my deck too well. It's just embarrassing because I didn't have to sacrifice my meat hook. Viper's Fang, take one. We're draining them out. We are doing our job. Yep, sliver, drain them out. There's the splinter. Of course it is. All right. We're not letting them sacrifice any creatures, but we'll make them draw and make them discard. We're too late in the game for the arena to matter. We might get us a card or two, but that's not very important. This is just about life total pressure. And there's a rune of sustenance. I put it on the rankle. Yeah. Oh, the ghost form. All right, down to four. They got one turn to get out of this. They tally. They go to three. They exile till they hit what? Another mana dark. They go to two. And a sky tether. I lose flying and gain defender. Nice. 
They're not getting out of this. No blocks. It's as simple as pass. Charmed him to death. Drana. The vampires are coming. We're on the play. We have a land tax. I keep, I mean, on the play land tax isn't amazing. I'm just so excited to have this in my deck. I haven't played this card in a very long time. And here comes my first time playing it on arena. Scorpion. Godless Shrine off the top. Light Paws or I guess Spirit Dancer. Yep, let's go with Spirit Dancer. When we start drawing auras, it'll be amazing. Just you wait. Just you wait. Zealot. Vampires are coming. Disruption. I guess it will have to go on the flyer, but let's get ready for it. Now you could, if you're a maniac, miss your land drop there, hoping to land tax next turn. I think if we stall on land, if we don't get there on land, then eventually land tax will be fine anyway. So we can be patient. It's fine. Ooh. Okay. Light pause. Disrupted. Draw. Oh, it's happening. Oh, it's happening. Now this gets attached to light pause. Seems good. Pass. Trigger. Concede. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way we like to do it. Jet mirror. Oh no. Well, on the play with land tax again. Let's do it. Someday I'll get a trigger off this beautiful card. I'll play a ramp deck or something. Everyone will be impressed with me. We got a reader. <laughs> Cruel reality, that's a long way away. It's one of the more epic of curses. Well, if I'm gonna draw land all the time, I don't need land tax. Sacrifices must be made. Feels good to get that Imara off the field. That card can be a big problem. Signet. Shauna. Just a 1 1 at the moment. Plus. You won't be outsmarting me. See if they're prepared for shield rid. They discarded Sacred Foundry, so I guess they're getting their red mana from the Signet. Or I hope I don't draw a Karn. Yeah, no auras on the battlefield yet. We're just punishing our opponent with classic black cards. Okay. Another opponent not ready for the ruthless aggression of Ariette. Shieldred and the One Ring in the hand. Let's go. We're up against Slimefoot and Squee, which could be interesting. They like their stuff in the graveyard. Auras don't necessarily send it to the graveyard. We need to draw land. If we draw one land... Oh, they're going to have to disrupt this synergy or they're going to die. Swamp Cycling begins. The card is really good. Like, these uh, land cyclers are really good in this deck. Because it means there's always something for Squee to bring back. Also, just the mana fixing is amazing, right? And off to the races. Their turn to play. Probably the Mind Stone. The Village Rites is the best card here, though. They need to play this tap land sometime, and they need red mana. So they'll probably be next turn. Let's take the rights. They have a fatal push. Something to keep in mind when we have a shieldred. Let's get the ring going. We're trying to draw into an aura that will neutralize Slimefoot and Squee. 
so they can't get it into their graveyard easily. Raid my Signet, Eater. Can I give my Ring Life Link? Would that help somehow? Don't want a Necro right now. We're doing fine. But I will take this. Alright, give her runes. A2 life. Rune it? Sure. I mean, the, no, the, they might push it. They'll probably push it. Let's ruin something else so that Ariat does Ariat's thing. Life linking land. Mulch. Grizzle Brand. No! <laughs> So they really want to get Squee into the graveyard. Vorinclex! Oh my god. Oh no. They really want to get Squee into the graveyard. Let's search for something that makes Squee not go to graveyard. They have push though. You can just push it. Hmm. Let's see what we draw. Curse? Could curse fatal push? <laughs> I don't know. What am I supposed to do with this? I guess we can definitely offset the Grizzle brand with this play. But we do need to be able to enchant our opponent's Vorinclex with something that makes it lose abilities or they will easily win the game. They can't have revolt, they can't do it. I could get rid of the mindstone, maybe? Nerf the mindstone? Is that really the play? Because right now they can sack mindstone, push squee. on your butts. Also, we can try to keep their sapperling off the battlefield. Yeah, you, you can, you just can't sack it. Through the ring? Okay, Sheldred's gonna do work. Did they draw land? They do push the giver. Okay, 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 okay. I think th I was on a, I was probably on a different level from them. <laughs> All right, we play Sheldred. We draw cards. We miss land drop. Dead weight a token? Curse what? Wish claw? Can't. I mean, giving this plus one plus one, I don't think will matter. But yeah, I mean, uh, let's just do it here, right? It's going to be attacking like every turn. We don't want it to hurt so bad. Silence, disruption, ossification. Katilda can go to the graveyard. Arena and guidance. There we go. No! Rude. Uh-huh. Can I use it though? Do you have the guts? Most people don't have the guts to use their wish claws. They just want to do it all the same turn, I'm sure. All right, how do I recover? Turn that off. Play you. Don't know what they're gonna get. I, I'm guessing casualties.
screen. Okay, that's a big one. get him in range of rankle and maybe we'll be okay they're down to seven the other thing we could have done to keep Ariette on the field was activate fortress and sack it but I think when I'm recasting her for five this is fine okay what do they get they're giving me a talisman can I find a way to win the game I'm thinking they're going to reanimate like Grizzlebrand or Vorinclex or something, but their life total is really low. They go to five. No. Really? Oh, that's so lame. Come on, man. Auras versus equipment. We're on the draw with land tax. It's happening. It's totally happening. We also have no auras and two things that work off them. Nice. Three things if you count the commander. Hard mode. And our opponent is ramping. Boom. The funny part is we could have gone first and we might still get a land tax trigger because of the bobble. Canyon? Yep. Do not mess with my land tax. Don't you... Don't you dare. Don't you dare. That's my baby. I mean, we're going to be discarding so much to hand size and I'm going to love every minute. Let's go, value. Let's go. Whenever you cast an aura, draw a card. All right, let's get down aura mancy and shroud up. Full equipment versus aura's flavor. I love it. Ooh, okay. Well, thankfully, I'm going to have a lot of basics. In the deck. In the deck. Shieldred. Non basic lands enter the battlefield tapped. Place a guard as aid, and then auras and equipment f have flashed. The funny part is, I can't draw an aura to save my life. Let's get Katilda down. At least Katilda can become an aura. Strelve. Nasty. Boundary Beetle. Nasty. Okay, they finally have an equipment. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. So they have all creatures. Let's keep thinning, because... Got to. Nazis. What is that last card, huh? Somewhere in my deck, auras will abound. You will see. 
but we might as well do this before there's nothing to take. Oh, oh, they wanted to play an enchantment. Uh-huh. The beginning of your upkeep, a random artifact, it's cost one less to cast. Plus X plus X, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. <laughs> they draw rack and fan. <sighs> My arena! They can't cast it. They can't cast it. You can't cast it. Thank God. Oh, thank God. I was going to lose my mind. Might be one of the last ones we can take. Hoi! An aura. Just in time when I could have played my shieldred. Well... Whenever you cast an aura, you may draw a card. Gotta turn off the scrolls, right? Gotta do it. Ooh, another, another one. We're rolling now. Curse you. Oh, look, a land. Six, six, tram, six, six, lifelink is gonna chill. We're gonna chill. Basic, basic, basic. Look at that. <laughs> oh. See, the opponent feels way behind because we have this hand of seven cards. They don't know we only have one relevant card, right? <laughs> I mean, some of this might be revealed. What's pretty funny is that we still have two unrevealed swamps after all this. Okay. That's Nahiri. Now, the way this works, whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, exile the top card of your library, you may cast it. All right, so they have to equip this beetle. I'm gonna equip it to Jor Kadeen and swing in and it gets them a land exiled and I will block it with my giant life linking thing. Okay. I, <laughs> I mean, I drew some auras. You didn't draw any equipment. A little, you know what? It was the perfect representation of how auras matter and equipment matter decks play out. Rowan. Ah ha ha. We got a thematic showdown here. None of these do much about Rowan. We're also on the draw. Don't love that. But we can put a lot of pressure on their life total. Strangler and Light Paws. They go to work. They definitely go to work. Let's see what they can do. I'm not disrupting them too much. So, maybe they'll just pop off. It's a ram. It's a good one. Whatever we play could definitely die. Maybe it should just be Strangler to make sure I get value. Now nah, let's be aggressive. The Crag. They did not play their commander. Interesting. Combat, hit, pause. It's gonna be really bad here if the opponent sweeps the board. But I am ready for a turn next turn. They're going for Rowan. Do they want to make that into a thing that can equip? Norn. 
No, 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 no. All right, making this a defender is not what I would call ideal. Let's try to draw some cards. Now this has to attach right on an aura. If you cast it, you may search for a library for an aura with mana value less than or equal to the aura with a different name. In each aura you control, put that onto the battlefield, attach the light pause. Yeah. So there's nothing I can do here to mess with Rowan. Because this has to go onto light pause. We could ghost form it. Now I can do that in a second. Uh, let's go with Glitters. Ooh, I'm a top deck master. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. How, do, how does he get so lucky? I don't know. I don't know what I do to deserve it. I do nothing to deserve it. That's, that is clear. Smash! How are you gonna pay life if you don't have life to pay? Uh oh. Well, it's here. They were about to go crazy. I feel kind of bad. <laughs> March for nothing. Scoop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rowan. And we are back for a post-game wrap up. A post-game wrap you may hear a few times if you are a regular viewer of the show. And I, you know, hope that you are. And, you know, if this is your first time hearing it, here's information about me, about CGB. I am traveling to MagicCon Las Vegas, but unlike other MagicCons that I've traveled to this year, all of the ones I've traveled to this year, I'm actually working at this show. I have a job. I am hosting Game Nights Live, which honestly is like one of the coolest roles I've ever been offered. And uh, if you're new to Magic or you only focus on Arena, you may not have heard of the Command Zone and Game Nights and Game Nights Live, but you should check it out. They have a YouTube channel. So this, what does this mean? It means I have to be in Vegas for a long time this week for rehearsals because they are pros. This is a serious production. This is a big deal. So with that in mind, I have to record a whole bunch of videos in a very small window. So if the videos are shorter than you remember, this is the reason why. If the videos don't have a specify a special outro where I talk about the stats, this is the reason why. It's a real challenge that I don't think most people ever have to understand to both uh, find decks and then play decks and then make footage with decks for like 10 consecutive days upcoming within the span of a couple of days, which is the situation I'm in. In. So if the decks are net decked in some situations or in more than normal, or they don't seem like the typical CGB deck, that is also because of the schedule I'm trying to keep. And I do appreciate your patience. I take having an audience very seriously. I appreciate you a great deal. I love that you tune in all the time. I love that you have an expectation of me, you know, that that becomes heavy. And I feel it in the comments when people are like, this is not the usual CGB deck or he looks tired today or things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I know, because sometimes if I'm traveling, I have to record up to 10 hours of video in a single day to try to cover some of that space. So thank you to those who are patient. I don't, the comments get in my head. I know it comes from a place of love. It's really not helpful to leave such comments, but at least for those of you who watch till the end, you have an answer, which maybe you can uh, go back and let people know who do leave those comments and then just leave that this isn't my usual thing. I try to give you about a lunch break's worth of content every single day if I can, and that is what I plan to do when I get back from Vegas. For those of you attending MagicCon Las Vegas, I will be doing Game Nights Live on Friday. Please come out to the show. I will put on the very best show that I can as a commentator for the Game Nights Live Championship. And if you're there on Saturday, I plan to do meet and beats at 2 p.m. local time at the Ultimate Guard booth. And what that is, you don't need to have a deck or anything. If you ever wanted to play against me, they have decks on hand. They're like all-star decks from Standard Past. You can sit down and play a little 
little best of one against the one in best of one at 2 p.m. at the Ultimate Guard booth on Saturday. At least that's the plan right now as I know it. And then the last thing is on Sunday, you can find me at the Game Nights booth at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., shutting the place down, the last signing of the weekend. So I would really appreciate it if you'd come by and get your shark token signed. I even signed Jenga Taxes. I even signed Mountains. I signed Fervent Champions. Honestly, I get asked all the time, would you sign a Cranko? Uh, guys, it's your cards. And I know I wouldn't be here without you. And that is why when I'm at these events, it really is like, I'll do my best to meet you. Now, the other thing I get asked all the time is, can we play a game of Commander? I don't know. It's really hard for me to get time to play Commander. And often I get asked, hey, CGB, CGB, please come play with us. And I'm like, I can't. I'm going to thing. It's my only chance of the whole weekend to get in the merch line. You know, stuff like that comes up. So I can't promise you a game of Commander, but uh, I'll do my best. And if you see me, say hi. Uh, let me know you watch the show. It means a lot to me, of course. It's the, the best part of what I do, honestly, is meeting so many people at these things this year. I've only got two more appearances this year. One, Magic on Vegas. Two, oh, almost used the wrong finger. Cool Stuff Inc. in Command Fest Orlando. And that is the in coming up in October. You've seen some ads for it here on the channel. So hopefully I'll get to see you guys there. And if I am not come, haven't come to your country yet, as always next year. Anyway, this intro, outro, this outro thing is going to be used a number of times to help explain to people what's up with the videos because people always leave me a bunch of comments while I'm gone with things like this didn't feel like a usual CGB video or why isn't it long enough or why is it a net deck or why does he look tired? That's why, because I'm putting in the work to make sure that every day you guys get a little something to get you through your day until I'm back in the office. And in the meantime, off to do some exciting things. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. And don't accuse me of not remembering to say it. I am putting this in every video for a reason, so that you hear your daily dose of, you're cool.